Everyone's biggest fear when buying a laser from China or from eBay or from AliExpress or Alibaba is that they're going to run into some stumbling block that they won't be able to solve easily whether it relates to initial setup of the hardware or software of the laser. I've actually received quite a few questions from people and many of those questions are repeat questions. So rather than addressing them individually by typing out a response, I'm going to make a quick video on the top five questions I've received. So let's get right into it. So first, how do I connect my laser to the computer and actually get it to be recognized and install a driver? So this is not difficult. So the first thing you're going to do is locate the USB stick you've been given by your Chinese supplier. Mine looks like this. You're gonna plug it right into the USB port and this is going to have your drivers for the laser on it. And it'll probably look something like this when it pops up on the screen. So mine says JCZ, which is the company that makes the control board. So all you're gonna do is double click on that. So you can see when you open this folder, it has a couple drivers and the manual and that sort of thing in here. So we're not gonna do anything else with this at the moment, but know that this is where the driver is held inside this USB stick directory. So what you're gonna do next is go over to the laser, make sure at this point that you have power to the tower and that your USB cable is connected from the tower to your computer. And at this point, you wanna open the device manager in your computer. So just go to the Windows button on the bottom left of your screen if you have Windows 10 and start typing device manager. Open the device manager. It should look something like this. So you can see there's nothing on this device manager that says BJJCZ or control board or laser or anything along those lines yet. That's normal. But since we have the laser already connected to our computer via USB cord, all we're going to do is turn this main switch and yours may be an emergency stop, but basically what we're going to do is give power to the laser. And there are three different ways you can give power to it. One, this is just the main power. It's a shut off. Two, this is the power to the control board, which basically talks from the hardware to the software. And three, this is the power to the actual laser source. You'll know if this one is powered up because you'll hear pretty loud fans spin up. So to power the control board, which is what our computer is actually going to see, we're going to press this button. Now at this point on the screen, you can see that my device manager has just been updated with BJJCZ device, and it sees that there's a LaserMark control board plugged in via USB. So yours probably won't say that on the first startup. You'll probably get some kind of yellow exclamation point that says, hey, I've got something connected, but I don't know how to install the driver. I don't know where it is. So all you're going to do is basically right click on that kind of thing and say install driver, update driver, something along those lines. So when you do that, you're just going to say, I know where the driver is. I'm going to manually install it. And you can say, I'm going to browse the computer for my driver software. And then you're going to point that installer right to this directory and say, probably 64-bit driver, depending on what your operating system is. And then you'll just choose the driver and install it. That's it. That's the entire process of installing the driver. So at this point, congrats, you've got the driver installed. So at this point, if you followed point number one, the install procedure for the laser, you probably understand that the control board to the laser has to be powered up for the computer to recognize that anything is connected. That's actually a minor issue that everybody runs into at some point. And you can see that as soon as you start EasyCAD, you'll get a bunch of gobbledygook here. Just press I agree. And then EasyCAD is going to attempt to start as long as you have your control board powered up, no issue. But if you don't have your control board powered up, when you start EasyCAD, you'll get a little message on the top left of this workspace here. If you can follow my mouse, it'll say something to the effect of demo version. And that just means your control board isn't powered up. You're going to have to close EasyCAD and restart. Not a big deal. Everybody's going to run into it, whether you know that that's an issue or not. Not a big deal though, but very common. So that's number two. Number three is a very simple problem that people run into when they've changed some parameters of their laser and they don't realize they've made a change. So to even find your parameters, you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's a hotkey F3, or you can click on this button and they pop up and there are a handful of different tabs. So what you can do is run through these initially when you open EasyCAD for the first time and take screenshots of every single one of these and save them somewhere safe. But when you know what these values are, you can always go back to square one if you ever make a mistake or you ever make a change that you don't like. So several people have found that they're, when they're marking, what they're trying to mark is actually reversed. It's flipped, x-axis, y-axis, whatever. The point is, it's coming out mirrored. So what you want to do is go right to this field tab of the parameters and look at your gavel 1 equals x, gavel 2 equals x, right in the upper center of this uh, little tab here. Make sure it says Galvo 2 equals X. That's going to assign the X-axis the X axis to Galvo 2. So that's basically as simple as it gets. Make sure these two boxes that say negate aren't checked, and you should be okay. You should be marking as you see it on your screen now. So number four is one of those simple ones that a lot of people have run into, and it seems kind of obvious after you realize that that's the problem, but if you are marking something and you say, hey, my field in the upper right of where I'm marking, let's say 
you're marking something and it's just taking up half your work area here. You see that you're getting a lot of good power here, but it's very light over here. Maybe it's not showing up very well and you see that I don't have any power in the bottom left of my uh, workspace. Why could that be? Well, if you manage to touch your laser, the lens to your laser, during the installation you got some oil on the lens or something like that, probably a good idea to clean it. There are a bunch of different ways to clean it. Some people recommend cotton swabs. Some people recommend a microfiber cloth. You can choose the best way that you think is the safest for your lens. But the point is there's probably something on your lens that's preventing the laser from effectively marking. So clean that off and you'll be good to go. So lastly, a question that I've received pretty frequently is, hey, I'm trying to mark this material or that material and it's not working that well. Do you have settings that'll work for this? And oftentimes that material is gonna be something organic or something that might be a little more appropriate for a CO2 laser. Now that's not to say that you can't make a mark on that material with a fiber laser, but what I would do is direct my attention to this epilogue laser page that shows you all of the laserable materials and which laser is going to be more suitable for that material. So if you're going to mark something all day long that's not really suitable for a fiber laser, maybe you save your money and buy a CO2 laser. It's going to be a little slower, but you'll get a bigger work area and, hey, cheaper. But if you're having trouble marking something like wood and you're thinking, hey, why isn't this working well? Well, maybe the reason is that this wavelength of a fiber laser isn't quite appropriate for that material. So not to disappoint anybody that all materials aren't markable with a fiber laser, but just be aware of this going in. So that's a quick list of the questions I received most frequently from people, and hopefully that will help anybody out who's new to the fiber laser world or who's thinking about getting a fiber laser. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.